You're listening to the Blissful Hiker Podcast. I'm Allison Young, the solo female middle-aged titanium-reinforced long-distance backpacker, sharing stories to empower you to learn to hike your own hike, too. If you enjoy these podcasts, please consider supporting them through Patreon. There's a link in the show notes or at blissfulhiker.com. This week, it's a long day, but the trail gets easier and drier, thank goodness, with only a glimpse of views. Morning comes with birdsong and a damp tent and quilt again. I unzip the door to slip out from my morning constitutional, and I see I sit right next to a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. It's about how I'm feeling right now, burning out. It's not cold, and I pack quickly under gray skies. I'd like to go as far as I can today so I don't arrive in Flagstaff in the dark. Funny, in all my hikes, I've never used my headlamp. Instead, I like to use the light of the day. I prefer not to hike in the dark, unless it's a special occasion like Mount Taranaki in New Zealand to watch the sunrise on New Year's morning. I start in forest. Snowdrifts and mud slow me down. But I need to ease into things. The sign describes the rough life of a logger at the turn of the century. What kept them on the job? <laughs> Food! <laughs> they worked such long hours they burned about 9,000 calories per day. I know I'm burning calories walking all day. My pants are loose, and so is my hip belt. It looks like Minnesota in here or Wisconsin, as I dip down into a ravine to cross a rushing stream. I lose the trail for a moment after crossing a deep drift, but find it soon enough. There's still lots of mud, but nothing like that soul-sucking awfulness of a few days ago. Here I'm just wet and muddy, but I move pretty well. I cross many dirt forest roads, but I never see a soul. I wouldn't mind meeting someone at one of these crossings with a beer, maybe a masseuse. It's so quiet in here, except for the wind rushing through the pine trees. I'm absolutely alone. That's one of the peculiarities of this trail, how empty it is. Well, mostly it's because we're all headed in the same direction, and just a few miles between can mean you never see anyone. It's also early in the season for everyone else, and that's emphasized when I come to a campground not yet open. Snow drifts against picnic tables, and water runs straight through camp. I walk up a ravine and see some homes that also stand empty, though someone has been here recently to cut up fallen trees, the aroma like Christmas. It is lovely, but I have no views except a vague shape of a large meadow where a lake should be through thick trees. Two mountain jays scrap and cackle, flying from branch to branch in a blur of azure. Another sign appears telling me about the lumber railroad that came through here, built in the mid-1920s by Flagstaff Lumber, and it became difficult to maintain the high cost of fuel for a seven-mile grade. All that remains now is a rock berm and ties scattered about. I swear I hear the ghosts of those hungry lumberjacks. The forest goes on and on, but I walk well and keep shortening the distance to Flagstaff. A small window through pines opens, and I think I see a snow-covered peak. Or is it clouds? It feels almost out of a fairy tale. I've walked ten miles, and I need a break. Ahead I see a sitting log, and someone's sitting there. Oh my goodness, it's Waldo! I'm so surprised, assuming he'd be way ahead by now. He tells me he would have needed to hike until nine o'clock last night to stay on track, but also was getting tired and needed to stop. He stepped on what he calls aloe, though I believe it was yucca, and something is stuck in his heel. Every step hurts. I sit down with him and chat. Waldo is a lovely young man, living now in British Columbia. He's not a fell runner, but he did walk the very difficult Pacific Northwest Trail with a much bigger pack. He's trained himself to carry and need very little. And I have to ask if he tolerates cold well. (laughs) Yes, he tells me. In fact... He enjoys cold showers. Okay. I tell him I carry a bit more for my 57-year-old self, and he thinks I'm joking about my age. Ah, gotta love this kid, especially since he's loving the walking and never wears headphones. We get up to walk on, and he mentions he has a YouTube show about the bare necessities. 
I'll tune in and maybe make some modifications to my kit. I watch Waldo disappear ahead and feel charged up. The food and the sitting help, but so does human interaction and with someone so comfortable in his own skin and in these surroundings. I move slower, but I move well and begin to touch on that delicious feeling I have when walking. This trail has felt like such hard work and many long hours of monotony before being rewarded with views. I try hard to see all the little things around me and to enjoy the simplicity of being outdoors with the wind and the birdsong, but it's become a challenge. As I mull this over, it slowly dawns on me that the trail is changing dramatically. It's drying up, and my hundred feet of joy is just about all joy now. And I'd also assumed I'd have creeks running around me all day today. And now, there's no sign of snow. I hear cars, many purposely without mufflers, and I realize I'll soon cross busy Lake Mary Road. A trail angel might have left water, but what's this? It's a bridge over Walnut Creek, which is now a flooded lake. It's time for lunch anyway, so I filter a liter while sitting against my pack against a tree and eat a small feast of cheese, fish, dried fruit in a bar. I cross the road as a pickup speeds up seemingly to intimidate me. The trail leaves the road and heads up through Oak Forest, placing me above Upper Mary Lake. But views are not on today's agenda. Instead, I'm back on a flat mesa of dry, blonde grass and sparse trees walking along a dusty, rock-strewn forest road. There's nothing to say but that this is a long, uninspired walk. I see squishy footprints now solid from a hiker I feel sorry for because I know precisely how awful that sticky mud walk is. So I'm cool, and I'm moving well, and my fairy tale mountain appears over an enormous dried-out tank. It's those little things that tip this walk toward a happy place. Though I'm totally exposed to the sun, and I suck down water fast, I need to find a tank with water soon. My map app has recent comments that Horse Lake 2 is completely dry, but I spy something glistening in the sun, and I head overland to it. It's just enough water for a liter, really brown, but it tastes delicious. Soon, as if my prayer has been answered, the trail sends me to the edge of Anderson Mesa, and I finally get a view of Upper Lake Mary, fed by Walnut Creek, where I had lunch. It's wild up here seeing so much forest, the fairy tale mountain and the lake. The trail cuts around Lowell Observatory's Navy Precision Optical Interferometer, it's one of the most precise telescopes in the world that can separate distant stars that normally appear as one clump. All I see right now is an array of long white tubes. Nearby is Prime Lake, and a sign tells me it was created around one to five million years ago when underground voids collapsed, making surface depressions that were sealed by clay deposits. Some of those deposits are on the bottom of my shoe. The important thing today is that this is a wetland visited by a hundred different bird species. Even when dry, this collapsed void is a very important component of the ecosystem. As I pass, birds sing, quack, and hoot, and I look for a sight. Still, I come to another road, and I meet a couple with a van sitting by a fire. Of course, I ask if they might sell me a beer, and Lindsay gives me the good stuff, a super hoppy IPA. Ryan asks if I know the trail ahead. When I say no, he gives me a detailed description of where to go. I follow his suggestion across a meadow, down through a lovely oak forest, up a road next to another protected wetland, and up to the Arizona Trail sign. Right here, under pines, is a flat, grassy area awaiting the alley coop. How the heck did Ryan know? It's just the exact amount of distance I wanted to go, so I'd still have daylight to dry the tent and sleeping bag, have dinner, change, and then crawl in. And right now the stars are out. The ones that can be seen as distinct objects by the observatory up the hill. You can subscribe to Blissful Hiker wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're listening on Apple, please leave a review that helps others discover the show. 
Blissful Hikers on Patreon right now. You can support the show financially as a patron. There's a link in the show notes or at blissfulhiker.com. Next week, I walk into Flagstaff, and I have itchy bites all over my body. Where have they come from? Bed bugs. <laughs> Until then, my friends, kia kaha and happy trails. <laughs> <laughs>